morning to members of the media. Thank you so much for attending in such large numbers this morning. I am Nicole McDonald, the Senior Communications Officer for the Government. This press conference this morning is related to a joint report between the Caribbean Development Bank and the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank on St. Lucia's economy. Today we have with us the Honorable Minister in the Ministry of Finance, Honorable Dr. Yuvaldus Raymond, and the Director of Economics for the Caribbean Development Bank, Dr. Justin Ram. Thank you guys for being with us this morning. We will start by taking statements from both gentlemen. We will start with Dr. Raymond, followed by Dr. Ram, who will be delivering a presentation this morning. I now introduce you to the Minister in the Ministry of Finance, Dr. Yuvalas Raymond, to make an opening statement. Good day and welcome to the members of the media. I wish to officially, also officially welcome Dr. Justin Ram, Director of Economics with the Caribbean Development Bank. The purpose of this press conference today is to inform the media and the public of the latest developments regarding the government's thrust towards a comprehensive economic agenda for St. Lucia. Part of that agenda to stimulate economic growth and development involved the commissioning of a report from the CDB in col collaboration with the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank. These two agencies were also assisted by the staff of the Research and Policy Unit within the Ministry of Finance, the In and Revenue Department, and the Customs Department. The Government of St. Lucia received the Caribbean Development Bank's report titled Fiscal and Structural Reforms in St. Lucia Towards a Comprehensive Agenda. And a presentation was made to the Ministry of Finance yesterday. Before we get to what is contained in the report, I want to put into perspective the rationale behind this document as it pertains to the overall economic vision this new administration has for St. Lucia. In order to rule out our overall economic vision, we needed to ensure that we had provided the best solutions to put us on the path to success. The objective was to ensure or secure a diagnosis of the state of the economy. We needed to understand where we are and what we were <coughs> dealing with before all our various tax proposals could be fully implemented. In the interim, we executed a large percentage of five to stay alive, namely the reduction in the increase of the vehicle license fees and the increase in the school transportation and school feeding programs. The amnesty on personal property tax will commence in January 2017, and the reduction in value added tax will, announced, will be announced in October of this year. I must stress that Five to Stay Alive, although expected to be effective, is part of our comprehensive restructuring of the tax system which is the purpose of this broad, detailed consultation. The economic plan of St. Lucia proposed, the economic plan for St. Lucia proposed by this government hinges on three major policy directions. One, reducing cost of living. Two, spurring economic growth. And three, curtailing on the high level of debt. The government's aim is to ensure that we do not place un due burden on public finances and that we address our current debt situation. The CDB report is a guide on the path to achieving those goals. So what does the report tell us? I will leave this, or leave it to Dr. Ram, to put into perspective. However, a glaring observation in the report is that notwithstanding the recent improvements in the fiscal performance, without certain adjustments, public finances remain on an unsustainable path. The report states in the last decade, the last decade average growth in the, in the economy of St. Lucia was 0.9%. Over the last five years, 
the performance of St. Lucia's economy has been generally weak, with real outputs averaging negative 0.4%. Provisional estimates for 2015 show growth of 1.2%, and preliminary forecasts for 2016 indicate growth of approximately 1.1%. The CDB also utilizes various scenarios in order to weigh the effects of tax adjustments on the economy. In the, con in the conclusion of the report, the CDB also notes that the initial assessment of the fiscal situation shows that there is tremendous scope for improvement. With respect to the debt situation, the report warns that risks abound and the high concentration, or with the high concentration of short-term debt. As a government, we are still in the process of re reviewing this report, and I know the media is eager to know the findings as well. However, this report is not the end of our consultation. Our information gathering continues as we await a further report on the economy and tax reforms from Ernst and Young. I want to assure St. Lucians that the government is committed to its promises on the economy and in realizing the reduction in the cost of living for all our citizens. The consultation is necessary and, and forms the foundation for our comprehensive growth strategy. Thank you. I now turn you over to Dr. Ram who will give you or give a, a synopsis of the report and make further statements on the fiscal and structural reforms proposed for St. Lucia. Okay. Good morning and thank you very much, Minister Raymond. Good morning, moderator, Ms. McLeod. Good morning, members of the media. And good morning to St. Lucians who might be looking at us at this point in time. Um, I want to say first of all that it is with great pride and pleasure that the Caribbean Development Bank um, is in St. Lucia at this point in time and providing uh, assistance to the government of St. Lucia as they seek to chart a path towards uh, fiscal sustainability and also sustainable growth rates into the future. Uh, the Caribbean Development Bank along with Eastern Caribbean Central Bank uh, was tasked with this uh, project to look at what the fiscal accounts are currently like now in St. Lucia, as well as to also come up with some possible ways forward for the government of St. Lucia as they chart a sustainable path for the St. Lucian economy. So currently I have a presentation here on our document and it's called Fiscal and Structural Reforms in St. Lucia Towards a Comprehensive Agenda. As Minister Raymond mentioned in his uh, opening remarks, we gave this presentation to the Ministry of Finance yesterday, and it is therefore a great pleasure that I now give a presentation to the public. So let me just first of all give you a bit of background as to what and why we have undertaken this particular uh, project for the government of St. Lucia. I should emphasize here that St. Lucia, like many of the other uh, Caribbean countries, and I should say that the Caribbean Development Bank has 19 borrowing member countries within the Caribbean, so that like those other 19 borrowing member countries, or 18 borrowing member countries, St. Lucia also exhibits some of the same problems that we see across the region. And that is, the economy is characterized by low growth, reflecting a high concentration in exports, as well as very high and growing indebtedness. Now, as I said earlier, the government of St. Lucia has articulated a desire to reverse these trends. And, so, and therefore, the CDB was requested to assess the current situation and make recommendations going forward. These, these charts that I put up here on the screen shows what has been happening within the Caribbean region with respect to 
gross domestic product, real growth rates. The dotted line there shows the Caribbean Development Bank's borrowing member countries. And from what you can see there, against other comparator regions, Caribbean countries have not been performing very well. And so it is very important for us to make this point that St. Lucia, being part of this, of this grouping, uh, is also a reflection of deeper structural issues that we find in most Caribbean economies at this point in time. The chart on the right shows the debt to GDP ratio of some of our borrowing member countries at the end of 2015. And as you can see here, uh, the Caribbean has some of the most highly indebted nations in the world. At this point in time, uh, at, the end of, at the end of 2015, the debt to GDP ratio in St. Lucia, as we had estimated, was around 75% of gross domestic product. So what's the current state of play? Our analysis has shown that notwithstanding a pickup recently in growth, public finances are on an unsustainable path here in St. Lucia. There's also a high average cost of borrowing with respect to government debt, and we have found this to be about 6% six, six uh, compared to the slow growth of less than 1% in the past 10 years. We have also found that when we look further at the fiscal accounts, that there are inadequate primary balances. And so without the sufficient primary balances, it's very difficult for any government to bring the debt to GDP ratio down to a manageable level. Now we should emphasize here that generally, we say that if your debt to GDP ratio is in excess of 60% of gross domestic product, uh, we do believe that that is trending towards an unsustainable uh, debt trajectory. So overall, the result uh, in St. Lucia over the last few years has been a considerable buildup in the debt stock. So that if we project these numbers going forward, and this is to say if there's a business as usual scenario, if there, is, if there are no mitigating measures put in place, then we see the debt to GDP ratio in St. Lucia by 2030 rising well above 110% of gross domestic product. And we think that once uh, the debt to GDP ratio attains such levels, it becomes even much more difficult for any government to bring the fiscal accounts into some level of equilibrium. So what is required here? We think certainly that the government of St. Lucia needs to look at fiscal consolidation, and this will, in, this will involve looking at revenue reforms that improve efficiency and collections, public financial management reforms that improve planning and budget managing, management, as well as structural reforms to improve competitiveness and increase growth. And there should also be a focus on transformative infrastructure projects, along with strategic liability management aimed at containing the cost of debt. Like I mentioned before, the effective interest rate currently on St. Lucian debt is around 6%, and which is quite high for any government to maintain. And so we really need to look at some mechanism that can bring that cost of debt down over the short to medium term. So what are some of the revenue reforms that we have tried to articulate to the government of St. Lucia? The first of this is omnibus incentives leg legislation to make the process transparent and uniform. So you really want to take discretion out of policy making so that any investor coming to St. Lucia know that they're playing on a level playing field. Reduce the list of VAT exempt and zero rated goods. Complete the restructuring of the Inland Revenue uh, Department. And that's scheduled to be completed by June 2017. 
And we want to commend the government of St. Lucia for pushing ahead with this initiative. We also think that it's important to conduct a geo-mapping exercise to support property tax reform followed by a revaluation exercise. What are some of our, what are some of the reforms that we consider necessary with respect to public financial management? We think that it's important for improved planning process to include a 15 to 20 year vision as a platform for a three to five year medium term development plan and annual budgets. So it's really important for the people and the government of St. Lucia at this point in time to set out quite clearly what is a vision for the economy as well as for the society. Where do you want to see St. Lucia in 15 to 20 years time? Once you have that overall vision in mind, then it becomes quite easy for you to develop medium term development plans mm -hmm. that are about three to five years to help you attain that vision over the long term. So we think at this point in time, this is critical that the people and government of St. Lucia uh, uh, put in place a vision for St. Lucia. There should also be the implementation of a fiscal responsibility framework. That is to say, have primary balance or a debt anchor. It's important that, and, and we have been advocating this across the Caribbean, that governments should ensure that the fiscal accounts are always within some type of equilibrium, that particular thresholds are not, are not overextended or, 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 or are not passed. It's particularly important for the government to consider this in their current planning exercise. And thirdly, to strengthen the management frameworks for state-owned enterprises. Across the region and in, and in St. Lucia, we have found that the incidence of transfers and subsidies mm -hmm. to be too high. And there really needs to be some examination of how state-owned enterprises are managed. And that, in effect, must also consider uh, the possible um, utilization of private resources in the management of these particular enterprises. So structural reforms that we have indicated that could be necessary include the improvement in the, in the doing business environment, including through a review of the institutional and operational arrangements at the port. So that's the port here in Castries. You want to ensure that it is very efficient and as least cost as possible to exporters as well as to importers to get goods and services out of, out of St. Lucia, as well as for anyone who has to import uh, items into St. Lucia, that there are no delays at the port. So the efficiency of the port is particularly important when we consider uh, the overall competitiveness of an economy. And so we'd want to encourage the government of St. Lucia to look at reforms at the port. The passage of insolvency legislation is another uh, area that we think is, all, is important and improve property registration by implementing an electronic platform for this so that we, we remove some of the bureau bureaucratic impediments to setting up businesses. You really want to encourage an entrepreneurial type uh, environment mm -hmm. in St. Lucia as we go forward. So what's the policy scenario of this active poli policy reforms with adjustment, Why, where would this take the trajectory of debt um, over the medium to long term? We have looked at a number of policies that I have mentioned before, what that could mean for the overall de uh, debt to GDP ratio as well as for the growth rate of the uh, St. Lucian economy. And we have found that if the government of St. Lucia was to implement some of these adjustment policies, that instead of having us on the trajectory, as I showed, the business as usual project, project, uh, trajectory, the red line indicated here on the chart, we find that 
along with improving growth, along with improving um, the unemployment rates within St. Lucia, we can also set the fiscal accounts on a sustainable path and get us to 60% debt to GDP ratio by 2030, which is the overall stated objective within the Eastern Caribbean Currency Union. So the Council of Ministers have indicated that this is where they would like all debt to GDP ratios within the ECCC region to be by 2030. And we think that government of St. Lucia can implement uh, sufficient reforms that will put the economy on a sustainable path with respect to growth, but also get the debt to GDP ratio down to a manageable level in that, in that time frame. So what are the next steps uh, that we have identified coming out of this report? It's very important at this point in time that the government of St. Lucia lead the formulation of a comprehensive homegrown adjustment program with support from, and I should say, the Caribbean <laughs> Development Bank and perhaps a wider donor community as deemed feasible. And this means, as I, and I would like to re-emphasize and reiterate what Minister Raymond said earlier, that this is really part of a collaboration and really part of a wider consultation, um, which along with the visioning exercise that I mentioned earlier, should now look at what is the comprehensive reforms that are required to get us on, onto that sustainable path. This will ensure that there will be economic and fiscal sustainability, and it could possibly unlock much needed concessional resources which could be used for inter alia budget support here in St. Lucia. Remember earlier I said that currently the interest on debt uh, within St. Lucia, the effective interest rate is about 6%. We think that with these necessary reforms, St. Lucia could have access to many more uh, concessional, concessional uh, financing that could allow us to bring that effective interest rate down, thereby reducing the burden of debt on the government of St. Lucia and the people of St. Lucia. Now, CDB, we are already providing some support to the government in the area of strategic planning, helping the government think through this particular exercise. Uh, we have done this in a number of our borrowing member countries with considerable success, and we look forward to doing the same here uh, in St. Lucia. So before I, before I finish, I just want to reiterate the Caribbean Development Bank's support um, for the people and government of St. Lucia at this point in time. We are here to help. We see a lot of potential here in St. Lucia. And we think that if the right reforms are put in place, that the future for St. Lucia looks very bright. Um, it, 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 it really is one of the islands that we look on very favorably. And we want to ensure that St. Saint Lucia is on a sustainable path with respect to its economic growth, social sustainability, as well as on its fiscal accounts. So I want to thank you very much. And I guess now, moderator, thank time you. for questions. Thank you, Dr. Ram. Thank you very much for that um, review, basic review of the report. Thank you, Dr. Raymond, for your opening statement. Now that you've gotten an, an idea of what the report contains, I invite questions from the media. Okay, we'll start with Miguel from HTS. Just okay. introduce yourself. Miguel Fabry, HTS News Force. I actually have three questions, am I allowed? That's to okay, Miguel. Okay. <laughs> um, the first one, though, um, you said that this has been trending, this, this has been trending for probably about a decade, right? So if the government, so the government, our government, or the governments in the region supposedly surround themselves with competent economists, why has there been such an unsustainable trend, as you put it, for over a decade? Is it that the, the government, the policy makers themselves, the politicians, repeatedly ignore technical advice <laughs> and make decisions based on political expediency? Is this, has this, is this a common case around the region? Um, number two, you, one of your recommendations, I think, was it, correct me if I'm wrong, a decrease in the number of zero-rated items. Um, would, this complement, would this be complemented by a reduction in the value-added tax or 
is a reduction of IAI tax recommended? Because basically, I'll, I'll take from you saying a decrease in the number of zero-rated items means an increase in revenue for us from, from, from VAT. So would you recommend a reduction in VAT? Miguel, just before you get to your third question, I'd say let him answer um, because they will have sorry, yeah. long questions. Yeah, long questions. Sorry, yes. Okay. So we have seen over the last decade or so, and perhaps even before this, um, there has been a real problem with overall competitiveness um, within many of our board member countries. As I mentioned earlier, that's because there's a real concentration with respect to exports. In most of our countries, we find that the main export earner is tourism. And this, of course, is a sector that is very much susceptible to vagaries in the international uh, global economy. So that um, it becomes very difficult to weather any global economic storm when you are so concentrated in one sector. So it's not necessarily a reflection of perhaps bad government uh, policies, but really is the structure of our economies at this point in time. Now, so what, so what we're advocating for here is that the government of St. Lucia, along with some of our other borrowing member countries, think about a comprehensive list of reforms that will ensure that these economies can be fully diversified so that when, and it's, and it's not a matter of if, but when the economic storms come, our economies are in a much better place to weather those storms. Now, uh, having the ability to weather those storms means that your fiscal accounts will also be on a much more sustainable path because rather than being dependent on one or two sectors primarily for revenues, the fiscal accounts are now much more diversified with respect to revenue collection and ensures that when the, when the economic storms come, that the fiscal accounts do not also go into negative territory. But it also means as well that governments must think uh, considerably about where they are spending a taxpayer's money. It should be spent efficiently, and if it is to help individuals, it should be spent on those individuals who need it the most. So it really has to be, has to be targeted as well. So what we're advocating here is that really it's time for the people and government of St. Lucia to come up with a vision. Where do you want to see your country in 15 or 20 years' time? What's that vision that you want? And I'm sure for most people, you want to see high levels of employment. So you want to see most people in, in well-paid um, well employment um, earning their way. And that is also good for the government as well mm -hmm. because once people are working, they are paying their taxes as well. It means that the government then has the resources to provide the necessary public services that I'm sure within that vision, um, you as the people of St. Lucia would want as well. That means good health care, good education, uh, well-maintained uh, infrastructure, including roads, you know, having a good link between the north of the island to the south of the island. If we have more people working, then the government also has greater resources through increased revenues to pay for some of these. But I also want to emphasize as well that now is a time for us to consider not only in St. Lucia, but also in the region, about how we can encourage the private sector to get more involved in the economy. Yes, and that involves public-private partnerships, which we, trip, which we normally term as the triple Ps, how can, we, how can we encourage the private sector to invest in our economy? So it's all about looking at that business environment to ensure that we have an environment that is attractive to investors, both domestic investors as well as foreign investors as well. Mm -hmm. um, the, fact, the increase in this, the decrease in the number of zero rated items, would this be complementary to a reduction in VAT or would you not recommend a reduction in the rate of 15% as it is right now? Well, what we have identified is that there are a number of items um, that are now exempt from value-added tax. And we are saying that perhaps uh, those lists of exemptions should be reduced. Um, with respect to a reduction in the VAT rate, that is a matter for the government of St. Lucia to decide. <coughs> and I'm sure that that will happen through further consultation with the people of St. Lucia. And finally, um, for years we've been hearing that our public sector wage bill <laughs> presents a huge 
represent a huge chunk of our expenditure, yearly expenditure. What would you recommend in that respect? Um, do we see a situation like Barbados where we have a number of public servants laid off, or how do we, how do we realistically address this situation? Yes. <coughs> well, yes. Um, the the public sector wage bill, as it currently stands, does consume quite a lot of um, government expenditure, and the government might need to look at ways in which to. Um, make the public service a lot more efficient. It is not necessarily a case of um, reducing the wage bill, but ensuring that you can get more productivity out of the public sector so that whatever you're putting in, in terms of your wages and salaries, you ensure that that is matched by uh, increases in productivity as well. I want to emphasize here that the public sector is a very important aspect of the economy. The public sector, really, in, 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 in what we see as, as how it should work properly, provides the enabling environment for the private sector. So the public sector is working well, is efficient, is productive, you're going to see a transformation in your economy as well. So really at this point in time, there has to be a dialogue as to how you improve productivity in the public sector, um, how you make it a lot more efficient. And that is a much broader discussion so that people can understand that if the public sector is productive and efficient, your overall economy will be more efficient and productive as well and provide that enabling environment for the private sector. So that's how I think we want to frame this discussion. Okay, we have another question. Janelle Norville, Choice TV. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm noticing a number of the CDB's recommendations go in the opposite direction of what the government had promised the people of St. Lucia, such as they said that we should uh, reduce the number of VAT exempt project, um, products, sorry, and the government is looking to remove VAT eventually altogether, as well as the subsidies. They mentioned that um, they are too high, and the government recently increased the number of subsidies on transport and the school feeding program. So I'm just wondering if these recommendations would affect the government's decisions or promises going forward. Well, <clears throat> these are just recommendations made by the CDB. And of course, this is part of the whole consultation. Um, when we come to, when the point, when the time comes for us to decide as to exactly what we're going to do, we're going to look at all the information that is provided to the government through the consultation. Um, let me just ask Dr. Raymond or Dr. Ram, can you speak about the contribution that value-added tax now makes to the economy? And maybe if you had a chance to review our collections agencies and how things are going there, um, can you speak a little bit about that? Sure. Well, there is great potential for revenue increase in St. Lucia. And um, with my consultation with, within the Ministry of Finance, particularly that of the Customs Department and the Inner Revenue Department, there's lo there are lots of money out there. But we just have to be more efficient in the collection. And even the type of, the type of, um, the type of tax that we, intend we decide to, to implement or to go with, we have to ensure that it is an efficient tax system or t efficient tax. The VAT's supposed to be one. Okay, when VAT was being sold to the public, we said it was a broad based tax, it was an efficient tax. But the question is the current model is it really efficient with all the exemptions and the zero rated um, items? Is it really? So, this is what the government will be looking into. If we intend, if we decide, we will be for sure be reducing the VAT but we will look at the efficiency of it and try to improve the efficiency in, co in terms of collections. We have another question. Yes, Star News Publication. Right. Two questions, well, more like three questions. So far, has the board members taken a close look, a scrutinizing look at the Ministry of Economic Development and the plans that they, are laid, they have laid out so far? Are they feasible? What are your general opinions of the plans if you have taken a look at them and is it something that the board members would be doing as looking at each ministry based on the revenue intake they are anticipating throughout their five years in government. Also, 
your opinion as well, what should be the main focus the government should concentrate on now that they're new in the government? Would it be, I know you mentioned tourism, we should probably try and diversify, but if there is one part of the economy that they should focus on primarily, thanks. Well, the question's for you, but I can answer also. <laughs> <laughs> I'll answer the second one. Yeah, yeah um, the government is looking at a comprehensive reform because we believe every sector, every pillar is important for economic growth and development. So it's a broad-based, comprehensive approach in our, in our development. Um, we, we are very, very concerned about the debt level in this country. Because when you have high debt, you need money to pay off your debt. So what the government tends to do is to increase taxes. And when you increase taxes, it's, it has some kind of negative impact or implication in terms of investment. Because when you increase your taxes, it means that you increase your borrowing. It increases the risk involved in investment in the country. So it shies away for an investment, and this is something we really need in this country. So we are keen in ensuring that we have a more or less, I would say complete, um, well, let's put it this way. We are trying to keep the borrowing on a sustainable path, not an unsustainable, unsustainable path. And that's why we have engaged in um, discussions with, well, I have engaged the, the Ministry of Finance, more spe specifically, the um, debt management unit in trying to see how we can reprofile our debt stock. What do, what do I mean by that? Currently, almost half of our, of our debt stock is actually short-term um, debt, $1.5 billion. And the, the seriousness of this is that we have almost like $337 billion in a rollover every year. We are paying $180 million a year in interest rates alone, okay? So we are looking at the, the serious debt problem we have in St. Lucia, and we are trying to see how best we can reverse that trend. Of course, employment is a very serious problem we have, and um, that's the reason why you have our prime minister is, is busy trying to see how best he can bring in um, investors in this country because we, re we are relying a lot on foreign direct investment, which has been almost, to almost zero, close to zero, in the last four and a half years. So we are trying to see how best we can boost the economy for foreign direct investment. We also see consumption as a key factor in, in, in promoting economic growth. If there is too much taxation or high taxes in the country, it will lead to low consumption or lower consumption. And that's the reason why we have undertaken, undertaken the fight to stay alive. It's just one part of the, of the many um, reforms that we have undertaken to see how we can reduce the cost of living in this country. Because we believe that if you reduce the cost of living, there is the potential of increasing consumption and, by extension, economic activity and, by extension, economic growth in the country. So it's not just one area we are focusing on, it's a broad area. And of course, I mean, as an economist, I speak of the economic, the economic sector, but there are also some social things. Um, so they, we are also focusing on the social se um, um, sector, the judicial sector um, um, reform. Um, so there are lots of stuff we are doing, and my government is busy at that. Okay, Dr. Ram yeah. will take the second question from the yes. start. So just to also support what Minister Raymond says, that yes, there, there needs to be uh, fiscal consolidation to ensure that uh, the debt profile of St. Lucia is on a sustainable tra trajectory. But we also want to emphasize, like I mentioned before, that a focus of the government should also be on growth enhancing reforms. Um, I always make the point here that um, there was a quote by a famous economist that says that once you once you think about the welfare uh, possibilities associated with growth, then there's, it's, it's, it's the only thing that you would be thinking about for a very long time. With high levels of growth, um, 
it means that, as Minister Raymond says, you can bring down that very high level of unemployment so that you have this excess capacity in the economy that now starts to move and starts to, and starts to provide productive activity, provides greater levels of consumption, and in turn provides the government with even more revenues to undertake um, much more of the type of expenditure that the people of St. Lucia really deem important. So we really want to emphasize that the reforms that will allow the business community to thrive are very, very important. Mm -hmm. So that the private sector really needs to become the engine of growth here. Um, so what the government puts in place, how it, how it restructures perhaps port operations, um, the type of legislation that it implements to ensure that there's a level playing field um, for investors will become very, very important in helping attain um, a sustainable level of growth. Now, what is a sustainable level of growth? Certainly, we think that the government needs to be shooting for growth rates that are certainly in excess of where they are now. Yes, if you want to make a meaningful dent in the high level of unemployment and to also um, improve overall levels of poverty within, within St. Lucia. So that, I think, really needs to be the focus. Focus on reforms that will improve the level of growth over the medium term. And that, in turn, would also help with the fiscal consolidation that we think is very important for the government of St. Lucia to focus on at this point in time. Okay, I think we have another question from Miguel. Okay, uh, yes, Dr. Raymond, I think um, in 2012, at the 34th uh, meeting of the Council for Trade and Economic Development, uh, they asked, uh, a request was made by St. Lucia for a suspension of the CET on pharmaceuticals. I think that has been reduced for, th for four years, I think it is. I, that has expired in April, a 10% reduction. I am aware that as of yesterday, it has returned to what it originally obtained prior to, to this. What's next for us? Are we going to be requesting further, a further reduction on the CET? Well, who was the one who, I wasn't too sure who was the one who made a request for the reduction. Can you enlighten me on that one? Well, it was in Lucia. It was, it, we, we made that request that was in 2012. So that would have been the finance where represented us at the court head in 2012. That would probably, most probably be Dr. Anthony after, after the elections. Are we, are you aware that it has expired? I am not aware of it. Okay. No. Um, but in that case, though, we do, we have had a lot of talk. I think when your party was in opposition, um, there was a lot of pressure put for the reduction of or removal of the value added tax on medication. Obviously, you want it cheaper for the people. Mm -hmm. So, will you be looking at maybe asking for again for this for for this reduction of the CET as it relates to pharmaceuticals? Well, this will be a dis this will be a discussion we must we will have in cabinet for sure, and we are quite aware of the high cost of healthcare in this country. So, of course, we may most likely give consideration to keeping it. Do we have any more questions from the media? Okay, I would like to just let everybody know that this report, we are planning to make it available so you can go through it yourself. And um, any additional questions or concerns you might have, we want it to be open for discussion. We want to create a debate in the country on what is happening and make sure that solutions are involved in the process. So I will ask, since we have no more questions, Dr. Raymond, to make a final statement, followed by Dr. Ram. Yes. Um, Media, thank you for coming again. Um, the government is very serious about growing this country, I mean, growing the economy. And we believe that we should not be doing it alone. We should be able, to, we should be, be con in consultation with the, the public in, in moving forward to where we have to go. So we want to be very open, very transparent in achieving the various objectives, economic, uh, social and economic objectives that we have for, for the country. And that's the reason why we, we, um, we want to be very open, very transparent. We want it to be a more a work with, in collaboration with the public. Um, we don't want to be operating from, from, from our offices. We want to come to the public to inform the public as to what we're doing and how we are doing it. Um, it's, 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 it's something that, although, y although the public the government, um, or the public rather, um, 
for the people of St. Lucia, elected this government to run the affairs of this country, but we believe that the public is also important in, in, in building the country with us. And this is just part of, just once, that this is just part of, or the beginning of the process of, of engaging the public in, 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 um, in moving forward with the development goals of St. Lucia. I want to thank the CDB for the work they have done so far. Um, I must say to you that the, the report is in a draft form and I was informed by, the, by Dr. Ram that the, the report will be available maybe in about a week or two in its completed form. So public be bear with us. We will be providing you with the, the copy of the reports in about two weeks time. We, we, were, we are trying to increase the level, of this, um, the level of discourse in this country as far as developing the economy is concerned. I personally believe that the, the level of discussion is, is very low. The quality of discussion is very low. So it is the intent of the government to, to provide the information. And, and when the information is provided, I'm hoping that we'll have some, some heightened um, quality of, of discussion by the public as far as the development of this country is concerned. So this is just the beginning. Thank you, Dr. Raymond. Dr. Ram? Okay. Well, I want to say thank you very much to Minister Raymond and the government of St. Lucia for the opportunity um, given to the Caribbean Development Bank as well as the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank in working on this particular initiative with you. Um, we think that it, it, it augurs well um, when a borrowing member country comes to us and, and asks for assistance. And I just want to reiterate that we stand willing and, and ready to assist further. We will be assisting, of course, with the development of a, a vision and, 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 uh, and medium-term development planning uh, strategy for, th for the government. But we also are here to provide any type of assistance that the government wants. Um, we should say as well that, you know, St. Lucia is part of the Caribbean community. And looking at many of these issues really requires um, a regional perspective as well. And I think that the current government of St. Lucia, um, we are very much delighted to see um, that regional perspective being, being, being echoed. In my presentation, I said that um, there is a problem of low growth and high debt across the region. And really, we can tackle this best through um, well-thought-out domestic policies, but also well-thought-out regional policies as well. And so I'm very, very pleased that the government of St. Lucia came to the Caribbean Development Bank um, to ask for assistance. Thereby, we can impart to you the knowledge that we have gained from around the region and internationally as well to help you build a sustainable uh, economy. So just to say thank you very much. We do see great opportunities for St. Lucia and we really want to ensure that those opportunities are materialized, yes, um, over the medium to long term. I really want to say that in a few years time I want to be shouting praises about St. Lucia and I think that that certainly is possible if the right uh, reforms are put in place mm -hmm. and, 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 and we can see this economy on a sustainable path over the long term. So thank you very much for the opportunity. My pleasure. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Ram. Thank you, Dr. Raymond. Um, let me just go over. We've been talking today to the Director of Economics for the Caribbean Development Bank, Dr. Justin Ram, and Minister in the Ministry of Finance, Dr. Yuvalis Raymond. I want to thank the members of the media for attending today and for your great questions. As indicated, the report will be made available in two weeks, um, a few weeks, and it will be available on the Government Information Services website. So we will keep you posted on that. Thank you, everybody.